Okay, welcome to the Financing Roundtable Coffee Chat, sponsored by the DC Women's Business Center. I'm Heidi Shepard, the Project Director for the Center. We hope today's roundtable will provide you with information on some new funding opportunities and other resources that are available to help your small businesses survive through this economic and health crisis. Before we begin the session, here are a few housekeeping tips. Please put yourselves on mute. You can ask questions via the chat box and we will answer them at the end of the session. The session is being recorded and the slides are posted in the chat box as well. We have five excellent panelists today, each of whom will present information on their organization's financial resources that can benefit women-owned small businesses. We will hear from them shortly, but first a bit about the DC Women's Business Center. The DC Women's Business Center is part of a national network of over 150 educational centers throughout the US designed to empower women to achieve small business success. We are funded in part by the Small Business Administration and supported by the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, or NCRC. Our center provides training workshops and one-on-one -on -one counseling to women entrepreneurs and we target women who are economically or socially disadvantaged. The DC Women's Business Center serves women entrepreneurs in the Washington DC metro region. For more information, you can visit our website, dcwbc.org. I wanted to let you know about two upcoming events uh, that we are, we are co-sponsoring. The first one is Legal Essentials of Doing Business Online. We are co-sponsoring that with Start Small, Think Big. And that is on December 8th from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And then the Health and Safety During COVID for Families and Small Businesses on December 9th. And that is co-sponsored with the Hillcrest Family and Children's Center and DC OSHA from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So feel free to register for those workshops. I'd encourage you to register them if you are so inclined at DC uh, on our website. I also wanted to uh, inform you about another micro uh, uh, grant opportunity. Uh, they GoFundMe was unable to participate in the panel. So I just wanted to uh, address that to you that um, there is an opportunity through gofundme.org. It's a very small amount of money, but you might still benefit from it. It's a $500 matching grant to qualifying small businesses. And you have to raise $500 uh, in order to qualify for it. And then there are some other eligibility requirements that you can see here on the screen. So I would encourage you to visit their website uh, if this is of interest to you and the web address is at the bottom of the slide. Whoops, sorry. Okay, now I would like to introduce the panelists. The first uh, panelist is Stephanie Thomas. Stephanie is the Director of Great Streets and Retail in the Office of the Deputy Mayor of Planning and Economic Development for the District of Columbia. With two decades of professional experience, Stephanie has worked with Fortune 500 organizations, a presidential campaign, minority depository institutions, various community stakeholders, nonprofits, CDFIs, municipal partners and elected officials, and all in support of community economic development, financial empowerment and inclusion, small business ecosystem development, access to capital and community banking. Our second speaker will be Shauna Yeldell, who is the Director of Lending for the Washington Area Community Investment Fund. She has more than 25 years of experience in banking and finance with multinational institutions. Her experience includes portfolio management of commercial and industrial entities, municipalities, real estate development entities, community development organizations, and public-private partnerships. Shauna has an affinity for developing sustainable communities through the economic development of underserved populations. Third, we have Carla Posada, who is the Latino Economic Development Center's program manager for the Small Business Development Program. She leads a team of coaches in planning and implementing program activities in DC, Arlington, Virginia, and Baltimore, Maryland. This includes support for business registration and licensing, 
obtaining qualifying certifications, marketing and sales strategies, operations improvements, and facilitating access to capital. Carla has more than 15 years of experience working in various sectors, including as the owner of her own small business, providing her with firsthand insights into many of the common challenges faced by women business owners. Chelsea Hart is one of the co-leads of the DC chapter of the SoGal Foundation, the largest global platform for diverse entrepreneurs and investors. She is a startup ecosystem builder and has led programming for entrepreneurs in the DC area, including networking events for founders, pitch prep workshops, and regional pitch competitions. Chelsea has experience in venture capital and in consulting, scouting for emerging technology startups at Deloitte. And Kate Anderson is a leader in generating change and gender equality within the private fundraising space. As co-founder and operations director of iFundWomen, she has driven millions of dollars into the hands of female founders. iFundWomen is the go-to funding marketplace for women-owned businesses and the people who want to support them with access to capital, coaching, and connections. That is our slate of panelists today. They are all, are all well-seasoned and uh, will give you a wealth of information and opportunities. And now, I would like to hand it over to Stephanie Thomas. Thank you, Heidi. And it is indeed a joy to join this distinguished panel today and to be able to share a little bit about what we're doing in the district government, particularly out of the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development. Again, my name is Stephanie Thomas, and I proudly serve as the director for Great Streets of Retail um, in Denpen, and wanted to share a little bit about what is the Office of the Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development, or DEMPED. And we assist the mayor in the coordination, planning, supervision, and execution of economic development efforts here in the district. And we have three real distinct goals. One, being affordable housing, and that work supports the mayor's goal to build 36,000 new homes by 2025, which include 12,000 affordable homes. So that's our 36,000 by 2025 um, initiative and work that we are focusing on. Uh, we certainly support job creation and we want to ensure that we have businesses and, and um, opportunities for our district residents to be able to bring their talents and their abilities to, and certainly um, generating tax revenue. Uh, we want to make sure that we have a strong um, economy here and that a strong economy helps us to also be able to use those tax dollars to provide great services to the district residents. And we certainly pursue all of these policies and program um, with a focus on the mayor's uh, uh, pathway to the middle class. We have a vision for DC's economic strategy, which is to be a global model for inclusive prosperity and resilience and showcasing how diversity and initiatives and innovation, I'm sorry, can drive equitable economic growth. And our two major measures are to grow our GDP to $100 billion, by, which is 20%, by the end of 2021, so that is still an uh, objective that we're working towards, and certainly to reduce unemployment across all the wards, races, and educational attainment, and bringing that rate down to below 10% in all of these segments by the end of 2021. So, of course, the COVID-19 um, pandemic um, public health emergency has now added another priority to DEMPED, which is equitable economic recovery. And in April, Mayor Bowser charged MPED with leading the district's um, economic recovery team, or the DIRT, you may have heard it in that way. And we coordinate, the DIRT coordinates um, new programs and strategies that are implemented over short, intermediate, and long term um, to support our, our district's um, economic recovery from COVID-19. And some of these programs you may have been familiar with. So we've since March launched the DC uh, Small Business Microgrant Program, uh, we recently added on to that with the Legacy Business Supplemental Fund. We recently um, launched and are now currently getting ready to deploy funds for the Small Business Resiliency Fund. We've done the DC Child Care Provider Relief Fund, um, and of course, much, much more across the district as a whole. I'm excited about um, the recent announcement that the mayor shared, um, and, and, and in conjunction with the DC City Council, was for the bridge fund. So 
when a, uh, the mayor Bowser and the council of the district of Columbia um, will invest a hundred million dollars in COVID-19 recovery uh, in the COVID-19 recovery effort. And this is through the bridge fund, which is housed in the office of the deputy mayor for, Plan for planning and economic development. And supporting this effort is uh, what we're really trying to do is support the business support grants emergency act of 2020 um, with, that became effective July 27th, 2020, um, which offers grants that provide uh, support to those sectors that have been most impacted and affected by the um, pandemic through really targeted and equitable investment. So with the Bridge Fund, um, we will be strategically investing um, into these sectors, um, $100 million. And the sectors that have been identified are restaurants, hotels, entertainment, and retail. And um, if the slide after that uh, is available, that'd be great. If not, I can sort of walk through it. So the total funding is $100 million. And for the restaurant segment of it, um, the total funding will be $35 million with an award range between $10,000 to $50,000. And we're looking to have impact to up to 700 businesses. The hotel fund um, had $30 million that was allocated to that. Its award range was between $10,830 to $270,750. And its impact um, is slated to be up to 140 businesses. For the entertainment segment, it was allocated 20%, uh, uh, $20 million, 20%. And its award ranges were between $4,000 and $100,000. And they anticipate being able to support up to 400 um, businesses and, of course, our retail fund. And that has an allocation of $15 million. Uh, $5,000 uh, to $25,000 is the grant range and will hopefully support up to uh, 575 businesses. Over the upcoming days, there will be application guidance uh, and, sp and specific fund information that will walk through the eligibility um, and, and timelines that are related to the funds. Um, so you're encouraged to continue to keep listening out, visiting um, the coronavirus.dc.gov website, and you can go uh, to slash recovery or recovery, and you'll be able to see all the opportunities that the district will be moving forward um, in support of our recovery effort. I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you may have. And thank you again for allowing me to share about the bridge fund. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay, we're going to move on to uh, Carla Posado. And we will take questions at the end. Just please post them in the chat box. Thank you. Carla? Yeah. Hi, thank you, Heidi. Good morning. I'm Carla Posada, Program Manager for Small Business Development at the Latino Economic Development Center, LADC. LEDC is a nonprofit organization. We were established in 1991. And our vision is to uh, help Latinos and other underserved communities with the skills and financial tools to create a better future for their families and communities. The participants of our different programs learn how to build their long-term financial security by buying and staying in their homes, taking control of decisions affecting their apartment buildings and starting or expanding their small businesses. Um, we have offices in Washington, DC, Wheaton, Maryland, Baltimore, and Arlington, Virginia, and recently in Puerto Rico. Our programs run under four technical areas. One is small business development, small business lending, home ownership, and affordable housing preservation. For the small business development programs, we provide business advice through our one-on-one -on -one sessions to startups, entrepreneurs, or existing businesses. We also provide uh, trainings, workshops, webinars on different topics from digital marketing to commercial leasing to federal contracting, um, local certifications, and many more topics. We have also our 
ProBiz program for um, businesses located in certain corridors where uh, the cities want to promote, stimulate their growth. And we connect them with consultants, providing them with up to 20 hours of free consultancy on any topic the business might need, you know, from bookkeeping, financial management, operations, uh, marketing, e-commerce, you know, or even legal assistance. Also. We have also the program with facade improvement and we work with certain cities on renovating storefronts for businesses located on main corridors. Also, we have a very specific program focused on women entrepreneurship. It's called Empower Women International. And that's uh, if you have an idea, you want to start a business you know, in the DMV area, we provide a training through four months, you know, on how to start your business from your developing your concept up to how to access capital for the for or start the operation of your business. For our small business loans programs, we uh, have a diverse portfolio to offer, and we have. For instance, the um, credit building or credit first, which is a um, loan, uh, personal loan, start from five hundred to a thousand dollar, and this is helps individuals build credit by providing um, a small loan that they can through a year pay for it. It comes from five hundred dollars up to a thousand dollars, and also helps to create history or improve your credit history. Carla, Carla, you're muted right now. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, no problem. So for loans for, bis for businesses, we have the ones for startups uh, that are called a startup loan, and we also have the seed loan. These come, um, we can be from up to a $5,000 for startups and up to 20,000, uh, I'm sorry, $5,000 for seed loans and up to 20,000 for startups. And those are businesses with less than a year um, in operations. And for businesses that have more than two years operations, we have loans up to $250,000. What are the uses of these loans? Um, to expand the business, to buy equipment, to uh, they have vehicles, um, expand your operation through hiring new employees, and also for working capital. Some things that we require for those loans are just, uh, six months of bank statements, the tax returns for the last two years, um, collateral, depending on how's your credit history or what, what's the project you're look, you're seeking for that loan. Um, and, and that's um, your business plan, your financials, and pretty much that's all. And we have somebody that will help you if you need assistance and how to apply for this loan, we have our business coaches that can help you go through the whole process, be, review your documents, review your financials, review your tax returns, everything, to make sure that when you come up to, to the loan department, you are ready to apply for that loan and your chances of being approved are more um, successful then. So, uh, if you have any other questions at the end, I'll be happy to help you assist you with any of them. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Carla. Now we're going to move to I Fund Women. Kate. 
Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you and really glad to be on this panel. I was so glad to be asked. I actually used to live in DC for um, many years after college, so was glad to be um, a participant in this. So um, I am Kate Anderson. I'm co-founder of iFundWomen. Um, iFundWomen is a startup funding marketplace for women-owned businesses and the people who want to support them. We provide access to capital through crowdfunding and grants, coaching, and the connections critical to launching and growing sustainable businesses. So we're coming at this a little bit different than the first two participants um, in that we're really helping female entrepreneurs get um, get on-demand access to capital when they need it um, through crowdfunding. And for those who don't know what crowdfunding is, also known as online fundraising, it's the ability to raise money from your network of friends, family, followers, anybody who wants to see your business get off the ground or grow, um, who then contribute to your campaign online. This has been so powerful during COVID. I'm sure that um, many of you have, have either contributed to some sort of online fundraiser or have asked people for money. And I think what we all know is businesses are really hurting and we can't help people in the ways that we normally would that come from gathering together with other people. So we really advocate for online fundraising. But what we really know at iFundWomen is that while over 70% of female entrepreneurs cite a lack of access to capital as a barrier of entry to growing their business, Almost half of all female entrepreneurs cite a lack of access to coaches and mentors and connections in growing their business. Being a female entrepreneur is so lonely and can be really isolating. And we really believe in the power of community and connecting with like-minded women who are in a similar stage, a couple steps ahead of you or a couple steps below you to really make sure that you're accelerating your own growth, but not making mistakes that other people have made before. Um, we have a whole robust coaching program that really educates you on all things entrepreneurship. And in addition to that, we have had an amazing uh, grant program that has existed prior to COVID, but really throughout COVID. And I highly recommend all female entrepreneurs on here that are interested in raising capital is to go to ifandwomen.com backslash grants. I can, I can put it in the chat um, so that you can see it and apply to our universal grant application or check out some of the grants we have. We have a great grant program right now with Gusto. Gusto is a payroll processing app and they're giving grants to early stage entrepreneurs. They're giving four $2,500 grants to early stage entrepreneurs plus um, a year membership to Gusto. I, I highly recommend checking that out and also heading over to iFundWomen um, or following us on social to be kept in the loop of all of the grant programs that we're rolling out. And also, if you're interested in crowdfunding, that's a great place to be. So, so honored to be here and really excited to hear about all of the different funding opportunities offered to female entrepreneurs, um, but all of the great things that DC, the, um, the government is doing to make sure that businesses are surviving because it's harder out there for female entrepreneurs. Um, and we want to try to level the playing field a little bit. Thank you, Kate. Now we're going to move on to Shauna Yeldell from WECAF. Yes, thank you again. It's, the, it's a delight to be here and hear so many of our uh, partners throughout the district helping uh, all of our businesses, but in particular uh, female entrepreneurs. So uh, as Heidi said, I am Shauna Yeldell. I'm the Director of Lending for WACIF. That's the Washington Area Investment Fund. Uh, WACIF has been in the community for almost 35 years. Uh, helping uh, build capacity and invest uh, and, and access to capital to underserved communities. So the way that we do that is very similar to what Carla mentioned in terms of business advisory services, what we call in the uh, industry as technical assistance, but also extending uh, direct loan capital because many of our clients don't have the ability to go to traditional banks. And we know traditional banks are belt tightening uh, as a result of COVID. So a lot of uh, the clients that we serve are those that cannot go to traditional banks. But our overall mission is to promote equity and economic opportunities in these markets. And the photo here is a photo of our metropolitan area um, as our target market extends from Baltimore to DC and also um, the surrounding Northern Virginia and Maryland areas. So next slide, please. And um, 
In terms of access to capital, as I mentioned, um, Director of Lending, so our capacity uh, at the moment goes to 250,000. Uh, the thing that makes us unique is that we do have um, lines of credit that we extend primarily to contractors looking to build capacity to get to the next level. They need access to capital in the form of uh, working capital support, you know, timing differences of their uh, receivables. It's taking them 90 plus days to generate invoicing and, and get capital through the door. And so we're providing that line of credit product, which makes us unique in the CDFI world. But that is a, uh, a product that is available to primarily emerging businesses. We don't do as much with startups. We do a lot with uh, companies that have two to three years operating histories because we want to refer to that. We uh, underwrite our loans in a traditional sense. We're cash flow lenders. And so having uh, two years of operating history helps us do that. So a lot of what we see are existing business owners really just needing that additional capital boost to get to the next level. And of course, some of the things that have always, all, already been mentioned, uh, if we're able to successfully do that, it does create sustainability, job creation, tax revenue, and ultimately building net worth are the things that we want to see long term with, with some of our efforts. So I, um, again, am delighted to be here. Uh, as I said, we are um, commercial lenders from the perspective of uh, being cash flow lenders. So we do look at cash flow, we look at collateral, and uh, make our lending decisions from, from those, um, those indicators. And next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, working capital loans. Um, I guess to summarize this, we're looking for, we're looking to extend capital that's going to build the capacity of the, of the organization. So whether it's a working capital loan, whether it's purchasing, purchasing a piece of equipment, or if you're a contractor and you need uh, a term loan for a particular um, uh, contract that you need to fulfill, and again, the, the line of credit product. So those are our loan products in general. And we are very creative uh, with us being a mission-based lender, things like a, uh, disparities in your credit history don't necessarily disqualify you from our loan products, but we do wanna have a clear understanding of uh, what has happened before that event and what your plan is going forward. So being a mission-based lender allows us that flexibility. So as long as we understand the story, it doesn't disqualify you. And with that, I will certainly be open to questions and, and any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. Great. Thank you, Shauna. Next, we're going to go to Chelsea Hart, who's from SoGal, BC. Chelsea? Hi, everyone. Um, so as Heidi mentioned, I'm Chelsea. I co-lead the DC chapter of the SoGal Foundation, which is a nonprofit that has the largest platform for uh, diverse entrepreneurs with chapters across six continents in over 50 cities around the world. Um, and our mission is to close the diversity gap in entrepreneurship and investing. Um, so a lot of what we do is provide different programming to uh, founders of businesses ranging from um, online access to academic, um, to academic courses that include um, different fireside chats with founders, other resources um, to help uh, entrepreneurs kind of scale or think about what they need to do to grow and start their business, as well as um, a session on uh, building without burnout, which is a program that we run periodically to help entrepreneurs focus on their own mental health and well being, since it is such a demanding process to be a founder of a company. Um, so, as part of um, some of the funding opportunities we have available right now is the Black Founder Startup Grant. So this provides founders an opportunity to win um, or receive $10,000 or $5,000 cash grants to Black women or non-binary entrepreneurs. Um, so a couple of requirements for this is to make sure that um, there's a legally registered business and the, um, the founder is planning to seek investor financing at some point in order to scale and have an ambition to really have a high impact solution and be the next kind of billion dollar business. Um, so our grant program um, is open on an ongoing basis with applications available on a rolling basis. 
decisions are made each month um, out of a random selection of all applicants. So if you apply once for um, the grant process, you will be included on an ongoing basis if you're not um, selected in the month in which you apply. So that's something that we have available um, ongoing as well. Um, and we do have a separate grant program specifically for Howard students. So if anybody um, knows, or if you are a Howard student listening into this webinar, there is a specific grant dedicated um, for Black women or non-binary entrepreneurs who are a part of that community as well. Um, so I think that's all I had to, to give the overview and look forward to kind of more discussion or any questions that come up from the audience as well. Okay, thank you, Chelsea. Well, now we have time for questions. I'm going to go to the chat box and see if people have inserted any questions uh, so far. And if you haven't inserted questions and you'd like to ask a question, please put it in the chat box. Um, somebody asked a question about uh, retail. Hang on one second. Does retail include uh, and I think this was for Stephanie. Does retail include yoga studios? Uh, thank you for the question. The retail, uh, so let me take a uh, step back. Each of the funds will have um, specific parameters. Those parameters are being finalized now. So I can't respond to say whether or not it's in there, it might be. But um, as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, over the upcoming days, um, and weeks, you'll see um, communication coming from the district about the eligibility criteria, the application criteria, which business types are um, able and eligible to apply under which funds. Thank you. I have another question. Do you assist people in applying for LLC? I'm not exactly sure which um, fund they're asking about, but um, Anybody want to chime in? Yes or no, LLC assistance? Not sure. We assist people in applying for an LLC. That's, yeah, we can do that at the DC Women's Business Center. Maybe that was a question for me. Um, let's see. Uh, contact information and links are on the, in the PDF, which is in the chat box. Um, does WACIF do loans for startup businesses? Does DC have funding for home-based businesses? So I can answer that. Um, really, we are not. We rely on our other partners uh, that are uh, panelists today, LEDC and some of our other partners' life assets for startup uh, support. Uh, as I mentioned previously, we are better suited for businesses that are emerging. So three to four years in existence is ideal for us. And Stephanie, does DC have funding for home-based businesses? There are a number of funding opportunities throughout the District of Columbia for our different partners that support our uh, ecosystem here. Um, is it, as it, um, if it's related to the bridge fund, I'm uncertain about um, where that would fit um, in, in um, this particular initiative. Um, however, I would recommend visiting coronavirus.dc.gov uh, backslash recovery and small businesses. On that website is a number of opportunities that are open currently for which your business may be eligible for. Thank you. So question for Chelsea. Do you envision starting the same startup grant program for other female founders? Yeah, that's a great question. So at the uh, foundation level, we are starting to explore other grant opportunities um, in the future. And the best way to stay updated on the, uh, to just subscribe to the mailing list that we have on our website. And I can, I'm happy to put that in the, um, the chat words as well um, to be able to to stay posted on announcements of other grant opportunities that may are in the future. Um, and then I saw another question around the turnaround time for the grant process. So decisions are made at the end of the month. So at that time, um, the applicant or the um, selected 
Startup Founders will find out then if they've been selected to receive one of the uh, grants that we have available. So it's really dependent on whether you know, you've applied during that specific month or not. And then on an ongoing basis, um, let's say if you've applied in, um, haven't been notified um, at the end of that month or at the end of the December, you'll still be in the pool for consideration in future months. Thank you. So to all panelists, there's a question. What are the main criteria you look for in women entrepreneurs? Anybody want to address that one? I think we, I can chime in from iFund Women. I think one of the best things you can be doing now is having a legitimate web presence to communicate um, through your website, what it is your business does, and through social media. I think that with all of these grant programs, I can't speak to every single program, but the first thing people are doing really like your cover letter is your social media. And it, that does not mean you have to have a huge following, but it means it does mean you need to like be communicating to people publicly about what you're doing so that uh, when we're, you know, clicking through, looking at, um, at sorting through applications, that is like a main thing that we're looking at. And then in addition to that, to be thoughtful in your responses um, and be honest to what your business is. That's all you can do. You can't really represent any other business, but to really kind of clearly articulate how this money would help your business. Anyone else want to chime in? Sure, I'll chime in. Uh, in this environment, I think one of the things that sets business owners apart is your ability to be flexible and pivoting and also resilience. Uh, there's a lot of disruption, a lot of unknowns, but your willingness to be flexible, to be open uh, to doing something new and different uh, is, uh, I think is gonna serve you well. Uh, of course, we look at all the fundamentals, you know, have, have you made money? Uh, how are you planning to make money in the future? You know, what are your goals? Uh, are they well articulated? Uh, those are certainly things that we've seen historically that help all business owners, but particularly uh, for women. Thank you. One, so, somebody asked, uh, do any of the programs try to address mental health and stress for women-owned businesses and women entrepreneurs? Yeah, I can, um, this is Chelsea. So um, I can share a bit more about the programming we run called um, Build Without Burnout. So that program is specifically um, designated to have 12 month cohorts set up with a small intimate group of uh, founders that help um, help kind of cope with competing priorities and how to check in with just overall mental health and well-being while you're in the process of um, you know building or whatever stage you're at with your company to make sure that that's kind of front and center of um, of kind of you know your own health and wellness and making sure that that's giving you the best foundation to to be building your your company with. And also I'll jump in here. Um, the district has um, a mental health hotline and I want to just um, take a second to, to, to speak to it. These are really trying times and it's very like just in living under the COVID-19 influenced environment has been really stressful and being an entrepreneur business owner in this time period where there is no sense of um, stability and we're not quite sure which way the wind is blowing and you're needing to sort of turn and pivot and jump and try something again. And you're just living your life. And I wanted to take a moment just to share that um, the district does have its mental health hotline. The clinicians are available 24 seven. And the phone number for it is 1-888-793-4300. I'll repeat it again and I'll put it in the chat. It is 1-888-793-4357. If you are, again, experience any stress or anxiety that's related to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we want everyone to be well and we have a resource that's there to help. Great, thank you for that. That's really important. So another question for Chelsea, is SoGal membership-based? How do entrepreneurs become involved? Are there opportunities to connect directly with other entrepreneurs in the network? Yeah, so we keep our community involved pretty actively through our Facebook group. Um, so I threw the link in there um, to the chat. It's, if you search on Facebook for um, SoGal Global, you'll be able to find it and request access to it. 
So through that group, you can engage with specific city chapters or you know, the broader community overall. And that's been a great way that we've had founders help make connections uh, virtually while they haven't been able to meet in a more uh, local basis. And then all of the programming that we've done um, in the year to date is also part of our um, SOGAL Academy that's available for free to access online. So you can definitely take a look through um, the materials. There is another way to engage to different speakers that we've had or other um, participants who have joined that as well. well we're getting a lot of questions, so I'm trying to go in order. Um, someone is asking about connecting entrepreneurs to pro bono or affordable lawyers. Yes, the DC Women's Business Center uh, can connect you with uh, a pro bono. We partner with um, an organization, uh, Pro Bono DC, I believe it's called, and we can help you uh, connect with them as well. Um, so just reach out to me directly. Um, let's see. Where do you find registered agents to help with applying for LLC? Please reach out to the DC Women's Business Center, uh, Alexis, and we can help you directly with that. Um, let's see. Uh, so gal, okay, wait a second. I'm trying to see if there are any, are there any questions that I missed? Let me just look again. Okay, so here's a question for everybody. What do you think are the main barriers faced by brown and black women entrepreneurs and what advice do you give us to overcome them? Anybody can tackle that one. I will, I think it comes down to lack of access to capital, like this whole conversation. Um, women entrepreneurs get 3% of the VC pie and women of color entrepreneurs get a point of that, like a very small percentage. Um, and it, it's a lack of access to connections and resources targeted towards them. One of the things we really talk about at iFund Women is that um, banks and financial institutions typically look at historical data of who has performed well and who has performed well in bank loans and um, investments are men, white men. And so if you can't see somebody doing something, you can't believe that it's true. And, and we've worked really hard at iPhone Women to provide a platform um, by launching iPhone Women of Color in January of this past year to and partnering with great companies like um, Caress and American Express to provide capital to female entrepreneurs so that these women who have amazing ideas get the same starting point off that other entrepreneurs have so that they're going to be at a higher level, we hope, in the not so distant future. More female entrepreneurs that look like the reality of people starting businesses, that at the top, it's not just men, it's a more diverse group. Um, we really believe like if you can't see it, you can't believe that it's true um, or that you can do it. So um, hoping to create more opportunities going forward. Heidi, I would like to add to what Kate has mentioned. I totally agree with what Kate just mentioned. It's the reality, you know, for female entrepreneurship, especially for women of color. And in the Latino community, it's, you have to add something else as a barrier and it's language barrier. And that is the struggle of a lot of the women, female Hispanics trying to have their small business, you know, start operating through pandemic, through the different situations, you know, and that's why we try, um, as well as other partner organizations here presenting, to assist them, you know, with programs like trainings, um, pro bono, like you mentioned, Heidi, too, with that turn, especially right now, we're assisting a lot of uh, businesses with legal issues by renegotiating your commercial lease or what you things you can do if you file for bankrupt, bankruptcy because your business is just closed, you know. So it's very hard, but I also recommend the, what Kate also mentioned, and those networking, of, you know, outreach to other, women, you know, do your own networking there. If I'm, I'm a coffee shop, but I have somebody who's making a bakery, 
maybe we can, you know, start looking for each other and see how we can work together, you know, improve the situation going on. Good, thank you. So another question for Kate, does, does I Fund Women help or have a tutorial that helps you create an established engaging profile? Um, are you talking about creating a profile on I Fund Women? If you can write it in the, the chat, I'm just not quite sure what you mean with um, creating an engaging profile. But if it is, I'm just going to assume that it's on iPhone Women. We have an e-course on iPhone Women that really guides you through um, creating a great campaign page. I always tell people, and I think this is great advice across the board, is a great thing to do at this stage in your business, and it can be true for like every single, I think, entrepreneur here, um, is find other entrepreneurs that are at the same stage as you and follow them on social media. Let's say follow their iPhone women campaign, follow them in any ways that you can sign up for their newsletter, see how they're communicating about their business, how they're presenting their business. That's always a great way to get inspiration and see what resonates with you. Do you like the tone of voice they're using? Do you like the images they're using? What could they be doing differently? And, and I think that that kind of um, inspiration can really help you to, to, figure out how you're crafting your message too. Thank you. Uh, question for Shauna. How long does the process normally take from start to finish, from application to dispensation of funds or access to credit? Well, the answer is it depends. Depends on how long it takes for a completed application to be received because that application includes you know, all of your historical uh, information, tax returns, bank statements, et cetera, et cetera. But given that, uh, assuming that we have everything that we need, it's probably a 45 to 60 day process before completed application and funding out the door. Great. I think we have answered all of the questions in the chat box and in the Q&A box. Um, we have some extra time. Please uh, feel free to insert your questions in the chat box. I'll also give the panelists a few extra minutes to say anything else you'd like to say about uh, your organization and your funding opportunities. Well, okay. Heidi, I, I would, if I could, I'd like to just add to what's already been stated and that is not to underestimate the power of cohort groups, particularly among, among women, because you know women really thrive in environments that are safe, uh, that they feel safe in communicating with. I've seen that in my own experience and know that to be true with entrepreneurs, especially because we're juggling so much, not only the business, but the responsibilities of a household and maybe even other responsibilities if this is a part-time venture and you have a, a, another uh, part-time job. So that's not to be underestimated, the power of cohort groups, networking groups, and people, women, other women that you can trust to really um, provide um, uh, guidance and support. I'd like to also share with um, the participants in today's coffee chat is the district is working um, I would say 24 seven, but it feels a lot like 25 eight to ensure that we're exploring ways that we can be supportive to our small business community. So I want to encourage one that um, our business owners um, tap into the district's many um, 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 programs that it is it has launched um, and will be launching. Again, I repeat uh, coronavirus.dc.gov is an amazing website and resource. Please visit it, visit it frequently because there are opportunities that are coming up frequently um, because we recognize that this is a very difficult time. And I think just also as um, potential applicants for these various um, funds and opportunities that will come up, these grant opportunities, um, certainly be prepared. Um, ensure that you have your documentation in order, that you do have financial statements or business licenses or copies of your C of I. Um, uh, making sure that you have your documents prepared and ready because when the opportunity does arise, you want to be able to rise to meet the moment and to be able to benefit if eligible for that particular funding. So 
Okay, any other questions? If I did not get to your question because I didn't see it for some reason, please retype it into the chat. We have a few more minutes. Um, any other panelists want to chime in? Oh, hang on. Heidi, do you know of any programs offhand that correlate with ergonomics, health, and safety? Hmm. Not sure about ergonomics, but we do have, a, have our webinar coming up on COVID-19, health and safety in the workplace and for families. So I would encourage you to check that out. Um, not sure about ergonomics. So um, maybe email me directly, uh, Janae, and maybe I can find something out for you. Anybody want to just chime in last, last something minute? Quickly, Heidi, um, um, for what um, Stephanie just mentioned with the bridge fund and all the um, grants that been for the city, the city has been working on. We're there also um, at LADC if anybody needs assistance, you know, with all the paperwork, with the application, we provide that also. We've been doing it from the DC recovery micro grant to up to the last one, you know, from this winter uh, strategy grant. So we're there if anybody, any business needs to apply for that and needs to know if they have the complete paperwork, everything is how they're supposed to have it, we're there to help. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to give one last plug for the DC Women's Business Center that we are here to help all of you uh, with one-on-one -on -one counseling services. So any of the questions that you have after this uh, panel presentation, I would encourage you to reach out to us, schedule a one-on-one -on -one counseling session with, with us. Um, we can help you with uh, not only access to the financing that we've talked about today, but um, any other business uh, processes that you, uh, any other needs that you have, whether it's writing a business plan or doing a marketing plan or figuring out social media presence or whatever it might be, we can help you directly with one-on-one -on -one counseling. So I highly encourage you to reach out to us. We are available, we are here, happy to help. And, um, and um, I just wanna say thank you I believe everyone, uh, all of the panelists are open to uh, you contacting them um, directly. As you can see, their uh, emails have been shared with you, which is very generous. And uh, we are here. Um, we all are trying, are rooting for women entrepreneurs uh, across the country, specifically in the DC metro region. And um, we all share the same mission and uh, we're on your side and we're here to help you. Please reach out to us as you see fit. And thank you so much for attending this session. We, um, we hope that you got something out of it. Have a great day, stay safe, stay healthy, go for a walk and enjoy the outdoors. Thank you thank everybody. You. And thank you panelists. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.